Hey everybody, it's Tyler Tapper. So every 335 XI that you will ever see has one horrible unsightly problem, and that is the front wheel gap. For some reason, they made it taller in the front than they did in the back, and I think it looks absolutely horrible. Uh, the best way to fix it is to put a set of coilovers on it. So I just said for some reason, but I actually know exactly why they made this wheel gap the way that they did. And it's because of the suspension travel. Even on the stock all-wheel drive ones that haven't been lowered to eliminate that gap, you can feel it bottoming out if you hit a really big bump. It, the suspension just completely runs out of travel. I don't know why they didn't design it better. If it was kind of a afterthought that they retrofitted the all-wheel drive to that chassis, but it's completely different than the rear-wheel drive front suspension, so that those, uh, so you can get the all-wheel drive coming through. First thing I did to try and lower the front without going all the way to coilovers was lowering springs. I did not put the springs all the way around the car because I did not want the back to lower, I wanted the front to lower and I wanted it to be even. The problem with the lowering springs in the front is that it really exacerbated uh, running out of suspension travel. So starting out, these are lower than stock and it's about 25 uh, inches from the ground to the fender. The other reason I wanted to put coilovers on this car is because the stock shocks were pretty shot after over 100,000 miles. It was just getting time to replace them, so I figured this would be an all-in-one solution. Actually removing the shocks is pretty easy. You're going to need two 18 millimeters. I used an impact to speed things up, although you certainly don't need one. Uh, you get that bolt that comes out through the middle on the bottom. Then you got to go to the top and remove all of this cowling over the front part and it'll become clear what you need to get to under there. It's the bar that uh, connects the strut towers back into the firewall. It's a stiffening bar. You don't have to take the cowling off underneath the windshield wipers because there's that little access point. This is gonna be a star and it was freaking tight. I, I could not figure it out for a while. I finally came after it with a big old pry bar, i.e. a wrench on the end of the wrench and after a while I got it loose, but this is probably the tightest bolt I've ever gotten off that did not break. And that's probably the hardest part of the front. Take that bolt off, you can remove it on the other side, and then you can get the four nuts holding it in on top, and the shock will just drop right out. Now, I did a lot of research online before I ended up going with the BC coilovers. I got saw a lot of people giving people crap about running these on the BMWs. Uh, they were talking about the KW coilovers and ones that were two to three times as expensive, which I'm sure are a lot better, but um, I didn't have any complaints with these. And they have a really good reputation in other circles for other types of cars. So I'm wondering if they just aren't expensive enough for the BMW crowd. It seems like a lot of people that modify these cars think that they need to get really expensive parts and that I have not found that to be the case. The bolts that you took out probably made a mark that you can reference when you're putting these back in. I tried to tighten the nuts down over, just right in the middle of where the old holes were. That way my alignment would at least start out pretty similar to where the stock one was when I took it off. With this being the first set of coilovers I'd ever put on a car, I was a little intimidated to try to figure out how to adjust them. Um, it turns out it was pretty easy. So now these on the fronts, I'm just basically guessing with uh, how high I want them to be, but I've made the shock bodies about as long as the stock ones. So you take that retainer ring and then you um, loosen it and then tighten it down where you want it to sit. After that, you can get a jack under the brake caliper. I put it, um, you just find a spot under there where you can jack it up. You'll need to wiggle it around. There's little part on the back that'll have to click in. After you get it in the relative right spot, then you can go back and connect the sway bar end link. Uh, with me, that took a little bit of fiddling up and down with the jack just to get it in line to where the bolt would go through and where I could get it all tightened down. If you're reason your stock end links like I am, they'll probably be kind of loose. You'll have to put a wrench around the one end so the nut just doesn't keep spinning freely forever. Now, I don't know why I didn't Realize this at first, but you don't have to take the bottom completely out of the car. You can loosen that collar and just, there's a bearing on top so you can spin the entire spring. And that probably seems pretty obvious to people that have done this before, uh, but it was not to me at first. So when you're readjusting it, 
you can leave it in the car just spin that then tighten down the bottom part this is how i got the other side even with the first side that i put on and it'll need some adjustment after the car levels out and after that you're done with the front it's a relatively simple install so now we're going on to the back to some much shakier footage shot from inside of a trunk uh, you're gonna have to put a nut on top of this bolt and you're going so the shaft won't spin and then you can loosen the bottom of it you're gonna have to take off all those interior fuzzy panels to even get to that point which is a little bit of a pain after the top nut is removed there is one nut on the bottom and then one nut that goes through that lower control arm that you're going to have to remove you can see it's not going to be a true coilover setup it's actually an adjustable spring perch and new shock uh, so we're going to have to get all the old stuff out which shock is pretty simple the rubber can get a little bit stuck onto the bottom of the shock the spring you'll be able to pry out if you put a little bit of weight on there to push everything down with the control arm disattached scratched my head for a little while while i thought that was part of the car and i could not figure out how to get it in there but that's the top spring perch you'll need to get that out probably with a hammer the bc kit is going to come with a new top spring mount it's also going to come with a spacer that goes between that and the chassis if you only want to lower it between i'd say about zero and one inch you will need that spacer in there i wanted to lower it i lowered mine about an inch inch and a half and mine is maxed out as far as how high that spring goes which worked out perfect but that should give you an idea of how much you how much adjustment you have without the uh, spacer in there this was the only really non-explained part of the build you're going to have to take this part off of the old shock and transfer it over to the new one otherwise this is going to rattle around in the hole up there uh, the other thing you're going to have to do is modify this top bolt um, and none of this has gone through in the instructions but as long as you kind of know what you're doing you can see how this stack up goes so you'll put that foamy thing on and then the washer that came with the new shock and then the nut that came with the new shock these coilovers are single adjustable for compression and rebounds so you're going to need to put those on they thread on the top of the shock uh, they also have some extenders that you can run up and out of here or you can cut holes in your interior so you can get straight into this but i routed to mount these up there they rattle if they just uh leg against the ceiling so i cut holes in my liner and stuck them through so they're still easily accessible through the trunk a good place to start with adjustments is 14 front and 10 or 12 on the back uh, that's clicks from the very bottom you're gonna have to bottom them all the way out and then click up to tell where you're at the only issue i had was i did not have the rear shocks threaded far enough out of their enclosure so what was happening is i was running out of shock travel and i was in a bad part of the shocks travel on the rear it was really bouncy uh, so you do want to get those so they're kind of in the right spot in relation to how high or low the car is sitting which is going to take some finagling um, and some adjustment so that wraps up all the parts of the install i'd say it was relatively easy overall i think you could tackle it in your garage uh, if you have all the right tools a couple of jacks i wouldn't be intimidated of it so what you're probably all wondering now at this point is how do they ride it's hard for me to give an exact comparison to stock because again i did already have some stiffer springs in the front of the car it did eliminate for the most part that suspension travel bang um, so that was a major plus looks wise i was really happy with how it turned out these first two pictures that are going to flash up are going to be my old car and then the next ones are just some bonus shots of other ones that are on coilovers um, I lowered it probably about close to two inches in the front maybe an inch and a half and then one inch to maybe one and a half inches in the rear um, but it would go quite a bit lower than that i mean you could really tuck the wheels in there for a daily driver these were about as stiff as i would want them uh, they weren't unliv unlivable but if you have rough roads around you definitely are going to feel expansion joints you're going to feel bumps you're going to feel dips trade-off for that of course is that it is extremely flat around corners uh handle great i don't know if the limits went up very much but just the feeling of control was definitely a lot higher i mean overall i would say that it's a really solid choice for an entry-level coilover i didn't get any funny bangs or funny noises or anything like that or anything that i would complain of quality wise with this kit so it's something i could recommend in that aspect so with that thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video i really appreciate it if you know anybody that would like this video please share it to them that really helps me the other thing that really helps me is if you hit that like button uh, comment down below with any questions or comments anything like that 
And don't forget to hit that subscribe button with notifications if you'd like to see more. Hey everybody, I want to let you know that I'm starting up a Patreon campaign. Uh, if you guys are feeling generous, I'd love it if you'd check down the description. There's a link down in there to my Patreon page where you can donate. Otherwise, I really appreciate your continued support just by watching the videos. Thank you.